So let's get started from the concept of bearing capacity of soil. Actually, bearing capacity of soil is the uh, capability or capacity of the soil to bear the loads that are coming from the foundation or from the superstructure to the ground, and finally they are laid on the soil. So finally, the bearing capacity reaches to the soil. So it is the soil which actually carries or bears the load of the superstructure that is transmitted. From the foundation to the soil fine. So, in geotechnical engineering, we see the fundamental property of the soil is the bearing capacity. Bearing capacity plays a key role for the stability of the structure. That is because the structure transmits the load via this foundation to the soil fine. So, we have some more terms associated with the bearing capacity. That is ultimate bearing capacity. It is the net gross pressure after which the soil feels in the shape. And when we divide this by a factor of safety, so we get another term that's net safe bearing capacity. So after that, the net safe bearing capacity, the soil pressure, which can safely be applied to the soil, uh, considering the shear failure in the soil. So the next slide is concept of water table. So water table actually is the upper layer of the ground surface in which rocks or the soils are saturated permanently. Uh, saturated permanently. The water table actually separates the under zone, that is the part that lies below the ground surface, and aeration part, the part that lies above the ground surface. So the water table actually fluctuates both with the seasons and from year to year because it is affected with the climatic variations and also it depends upon the amount of precipitation. So this is the water table, this is a uh, pictorial view of the water table, actually water table above which is the uh, capillary fringe or what we call as zone of aeration and below which contains the rocks or soils in the saturated uh, while we have the aquifers confined and uh, unconfined and above which we have the unsaturated zone which is also known as Gaidon's table. So continuing with the next slide that is Terzaghi's bearing capacity equation. It was Carl von Terzaghi in 1943 who first gave the bearing capacity equation. The bearing capacity equation according to him depends upon the three factors. Number one, it is the shear strength which is the function of the cohesion. And number second, the surcharge. Surcharge is the soil that is present above the base of the footing. And number third is the unique weight of the self weight of soil. So the final equation is CMC. That is uh, uh, function of the cohesion, that is shear strength, and the surcharge, gamma DFQ, that is the soil that is present above the footing. And finally, the unit weight. Now, what actually happens is due to the water table? We have the case. First of all, where the assumption is that we are made by the tertiary. Number one, the base of the footing should be rough. It was the, these were the assumptions made by the tertiary. Number second, the footing is laid at, at shallow depths. Actually, the Terzaghi's basic assumption about the footing, shallow footing was that the, this depth should not exceed the width of the foundation. Number two, load on the footing is vertical and uniformly distributed. It should be uniform, it should be evenly distributed. Number four is shear strain of the above the footing is neglected. As you see, the surcharge does not play any role in the shear strain. Therefore, whatever will be the above footing, the surcharge doesn't have any role in the shear strength. And the fifth one is angle of roughness between the foundation and the soil is considerably equal to the internal uh, frictional angle of the soil. That is the soil which um, makes with the, that we have seen in the more circle, normal stress and the failure angle. And uh, next is footing is continuous, which makes the analysis true. Continuing with the next slide, that's our main topic. That is the effect of water table. 
So the first location of the water table is above the food. We will have three cases in general. The first case is when the water table is located above the base of the food. See what happens here. I have already in the earlier slides I have mentioned that the surcharge is the amount of soil that is present above the footing. Here, when the water table is above the footing, base of the footing, surcharge, effective surcharge will get reduced as it will get subsumed under the water. Also, the soil beneath the footing of the footing, base of the footing will also get affected. It's, it will be submerging in weight of the soil. So basically, what happens here? We know that unit dry unit weight of soil is uh, more than the submerged unit weight. It's actually twice. So what happens when the effective surcharge is reduced and also the soil beneath the footing is also getting reduced, the unit weight gets reduced. So finally, it leads to the reduction in the bearing capacity of soil. So this was the case number one. It is actually because the surcharge effective surcharge is getting reduced. Number second. Case number second. When the water table is just below the footings, okay, na? base a of the footing. So here, what happens? It's not impacting the surcharge, but actually, again, what we see, the I will go back to earlier slides. There are changes in the last two terms. Last two terms, what we include, we include reduction factor. Reduction factor in case when we see earlier uh, when the this. Uh, Water table is above the base of the footing, there will be a reduction factor or W1 in the second year. And in case in this case, the reduction factor will be added to the third year or W2. This is what I would say. So actually, what happens here in the first earlier case? Changes will occur in the door terms. Term 1, second and term third also. Because surcharge was getting reduced and the unit weight of soil was getting changed. But in the second case, which I have mentioned here. In this case, only the soil which lies beneath the footing will get reduced. The effective, the unit weight will get reduced. And here again, the bearing capacity is getting reduced. And case number third, that's usual. When the water table lies at a depth which is greater than the width of the footing, then here it will be, there will be no change in the bearing capacity of the soil. So it is as usual, the equation will be as it is given by the Kersenese equation which is in the in its original form. So lastly, the, the some of the effects that high water table has caused, it has actually, what actually here happens is the cohesion of the soil gets reduced, bearing capacity gets reduced, elasticity of the soil gets increased, and which results in the low bearing capacity of the soil. This is one of the effects which has been seen after so many years construction of a building. Uh, so the water table has uh, risen and which has caused the destruction of the building and the foundation of the building. So the conclusion from these effects is that the parameters that govern the bearing capacity of the soil are cohesion, unit weight of soil, depth of the foundation and the angle of internal. One more thing that we have seen, the depth of the foundation increases, the bearing capacity of the soil increases, as the surcharge will also get increased. Next thing is, the percentage increase in comparison with the increase in the depth of the foundation, that is 0 0.9, 1.2, 1.5 and 1.8, we have seen 8.67, C.97 and 25.11% respectively. And the percentage decrease with the water table correction seen by the Terzaghi's method here 8.45 and 26.58% respectively. And by the ice core method, the percentage decrease in the bearing capacity of soil by the water table correction here seen 12.18% and 29.43%. Thank you.
हाई बेरिंग कैपेसिटी सॉइल्स में आते हैं ग्रेवल्स एंड सेम्स और लो बेरिंग कैपेसिटी में आते हैं क्लेज एंड सीम्स और जो जो में कौन है किसका किसका